What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to tonight's call. I'm excited to see you all on a Friday night, right? There's a million things that we could be, all be doing, but you chose to take 30 to 45 minutes of your evening to grow your mind, okay? So I congratulate you, first of all, just for that alone, okay? We're all on a mission here. And if we want to change the world, we need to change ourselves first. We can't help others if we don't help ourselves, right? So that's why we're here. Um, the things that we're going to be speaking about tonight, this is going to be nothing new, as always, but these are good reminders, okay? These are good reminders so that we're, we're in the right thinking state, in the right mindset, right? So that we can get in that sweet spot that we talk about so much. 1% better each day. That's the goal. So... That's what we're gonna do, right? For those of you that have pen and paper, for those of you that have pen and paper, I recommend it. Um, I recommend you write down some things because as I, as I said before, it is proven that we forget 90 to 95% of what we learn. So what you will hear tonight, 90 to 95% of it is gonna be gone by tomorrow because we get hit by so many different things and thoughts and ideas and, 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 and images and concepts in words every single day. So anything that sticks out to you, I recommend you writing it down by, by hand, okay, because it triggers more neurological um, uh, spots in your brain than just typing, right? Uh, and, uh, and we're going to go from there, okay? So with that said, we, we're going to jump right into it. The topic of tonight is find, finding and fine-tuning your talents, Okay, now don't mind me that I'm going to be looking down. I took a couple of notes just so I'm organized through this call. Okay, topic of tonight, finding and fine-tuning your talents. Very, very powerful topic. Something I have never heard about in school. Interesting, right? Like we went through 12 years of school, some people plus, and no one ever had one class saying, today we're going to find your talents and help you build them out. Never. <laughs> okay, so that's what we do in our own time, and that's what we're here. So I appreciate you guys coming to grow with us. 18, man, that's awesome. Cool. So very first thing that I want to bring to you guys, right? When we think about talents, we naturally think of things that we have naturally, right? And although that is true, okay, we have natural talents, Here's what we do not want to do, right? And if you're taking notes, I recommend you writing it down. Do not wait for your talents to come to you. Don't wait for your talents to come to you. Here's what you need to do. Start doing things, trying things, going out and experiencing things, and then by doing, you will find out what your talents are. Interesting concept, right? Don't wait for your talents to appear. Start doing, and then you will find your talents. Here's the one thing for sure. If you don't try, you will never know. Never. Right? That was one of the things that I always used to tell myself as I was starting in this entrepreneurship journey of mine at the age of 19. I always had two questions, okay? I always had uh, two thoughts that would come to my mind every single time that I wanted to try something. The first thought was, what if it doesn't work? What if I fail? What if it doesn't go the way I wanted to go? What if I look dumb and stupid and, and, I'm, 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 and, and, and it, I look embarrassing, right? That was one thought. And then the second thought was, well, what if it does work? And what if I don't try and I never get to find out if it will work? That is the only fear that really uh, got me, okay? Because we all know that we're either driven by the fear of losing or the potential of gain, right? We're, we're moved by those two things. The only fear that I allow to drive me in life is not the fear of failure, it's not the fear of what can go wrong, but instead it's the fear of not doing and never learning where it can take me, never finding out where it can take me, right? So if we don't try, we never know. 
Stop waiting for your talents to come to you. Go out and start doing things, and then you're going to find out your talents. Number two, number two, what comes easy to you? It's a question. What comes easy to you, right? You need to try some things that are easy so that you can find out. Maybe you have a talent hiding there. Okay, a way that you can find out what comes easy to you, one way is by you starting to do things, right? So if you pick up the phone and communicating with people comes very easy, or if, for example, making friends is an easy thing to you, right? If you're able to relate with people easily, if you're able to make people feel comfortable when they speak with you, you have a natural talent to making friends. It's just easy, right? So now you know, it's easy. What comes easy to you? Is it maybe you're, you're a good support for people? You're a great listener? Or you're a great at giving compliments, right? I know some people that are just unbelievable at giving people compliments, making them feel good about themselves. And they're not lying, it's just how they are. They look at the good and they, and they, and they speak that into reality to the person that is listening, right? That's a talent, that's a gift. Okay, so what comes easy to you? A way that you can also find out what comes easy to you is, is another question for you to think about. What do people compliment you on? All right? whenever people give you a compliment, whenever anyone give you any kind of compliment, what do they say about you or to you, okay? Wow, you have such a great smile, you have such a great vibe. I love the way you make me feel when I speak with you. So awesome that you listen to me, like whatever that is. Start thinking, what, when people compliment me, what do they say, okay? What do they say about me or to me, okay? That's a way that you can find out your talents. Moving on, number three, what frightens you? What makes you feel afraid? What are you afraid of? When you think about doing something, what is it that makes you feel afraid? I'll tell you a personal one, that I struggled with in my life growing up was speaking in front of people, public speaking. They say it's a bigger fear than death for most people. People are more afraid of public speaking than they are to dying, <laughs> which is pretty crazy to think about, right? But here's what I realized, right? So that's something that's hard for me, right? So we spoke about doing easy things, now we're going to speak about doing hard things, all right? Doing hard things. What frightens you? I realized that if I wanted to master my life, if I wanted to master who I was as an individual and become my strongest version, I needed to face my fears. And it sounds good, right? Like we are, oh yeah, sure, let's face our fears. But Doing it is the hard part. So here's what I realized. When I started in the world of entrepreneurship five years ago, I had people tell me, I heard one quote, all right? This might be the quote that you guys want to write down. This might be the reason why you came to this call tonight and you're an entrepreneur, you are working on being an entrepreneur, you're being a, you, you want to be a public speaker, you want to share your gifts to the world. Here's the quote. The person with the marker usually makes the most money. Think about that one. The person with the marker usually makes the most money. Who's the person with the marker? The person who is teaching. Whether it's whatever that is, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. But that quote made me start thinking, man, if the person who is speaking, the person who is with the marker makes the most money, I, mean, I want to I wanna be the guy with the marker. How do I become the guy with the marker? Number one, I got to elevate myself. I got to build my value up. I got to find and fine tune my talents, right? And what was my fear? What is it that frightened me? Public speaking. So you know what I started doing? Speaking in front of people. And I remember the first five to 10 times that I did it. <laughs> Man, I mean, I was sweating. I was red. I was shaking, I was stuttering, I was all over the place. And I wanted to give up. But gladly I had people around me that said, don't worry about it, Nick. Tomorrow's another day. 
you're going to get better, brother. Right? I had support. I said, you know, you're right. You're right. I am going to get better. Let's look it over. What can we do better? What didn't you do well? Oh, your posture. So do you guys, you guys know, right, that just by changing your posture, you can feel better about yourself. I know Eric, you know, a lot of us that went to the Tony Robbins event, they speak about that. One, one inch of change of your chest completely changes your, your, um, your confidence, right? If you're closed off before you go speak in public or you have, before you speak in a class or whatever that is in front of people, you will feel insecure right? If you open up your chest a little bit more, you will feel more confident. It will release confident emotions in your brain. So you will feel better and you're going to be able to do what you, what you need to do. Right. But whatever frightens you, I just use that as an example, right? My public speaking and it took a while, but you know what? I got better every single time. And one quote that I love, right. That I posted on my, on my Facebook, maybe some of you guys saw it, maybe not, but quitters, stop or quitters give up when they fail winners fail until they win i'm gonna say that one again quitters give up when they fail winners fail until they win It's all in the mindset. So what frightens you? Do that. I used to be afraid of picking up the phone and talking to people. And maybe the reason why I was afraid of that is because 10 years ago, I didn't even speak English. Right? A lot of you know that. So it was natural that I was, gonna, I was afraid of speaking in front of people. I remember the first job that I had, Chick-fil-A. First job, I was 16, right? My first job. It was great. It taught me a lot. But I remember them putting me on headset. I was the guy on headset getting people's orders, right? And I couldn't understand the thing. I had this one thing where if I didn't see someone speaking to me, I couldn't see their lips. I couldn't read their lips. I, I wouldn't understand them. So I, I was afraid of speaking on the phone, literally. Like the, the phone rang. I wasn't the guy to answer ever. I literally grabbed it and handed it to people because I was afraid of it. And... I didn't have a choice, but I had to do the things that I didn't want to do, which was speak on the phone with people and on headset. And that right there, because I faced my fears, now I love getting on the phone with people. I genuinely enjoy it. I enjoyed having conversations. Okay? So that's just an example. Find whatever scares you, whatever you are afraid of, and do that. That's a way that you're going to find your talents. You might find a, a, a hidden talent in your fears. I was afraid of, of public speaking. I was afraid of talking to people. I was afraid of communicating. And now I have people complimenting me on how great of a communicator I am. It was a talent hitting there, and I didn't know. Right? So that's, that's it. Number three. Number four. What are you obsessed about? What are you obsessed about? What are you obsessed about? That's something that you need to figure out on your own. You might need to take some time after this call and really think about this question. This is a really good question. What are you obsessed about? A personal obsession of mine is, is helping others. To the point where it can even hurt me because I give myself too much, right? It, can, it literally can turn, it, it, can, it can bite me. But it's okay because it's my obsession. And sometimes I want to help people so much, I want to help people that I don't want to help themselves. So I had to learn that as well to be logical about things sometimes. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to be helped. But it's okay because I am obsessed about that. I'm obsessed about growing myself and bettering every day. I'm obsessed about that. That's just me. And let me just tell you something, right? The word obsession is not a bad word. It is not a bad thing to be obsessed. Right? A lot of you know Grant Cardone, be obsessed or be average. If you're not willing to obsess over what you really want in life, then you will never become great at it, period. It just won't happen. You have to be, allow yourself to obsess over the things that you want and that, that you value in life so that you can become great at them. 
What are you obsessed about? There, you will find your, one of your talents, some of your talents, perhaps. A lot of us don't have just one talent. We have many talents. What are you obsessed about? What brings you joy? I have a talent in being free, man. I just love being free. <laughs> I love traveling. I love working for myself. I love it. I just feel great. I feel a lot of joy and fulfillment and happiness from it. Right? <laughs> so I had to find some talents that could help me create that lifestyle that I wanted. Number five, take a personality test. Right? Find out what are you. If, if one of you in the chat right now, in our Zoom call over here, the 21 of you, if you have a, um, a link to a personality test that you can drop, drop on this chat that we have here while we're having this conversation real quick so that people can click that and after, go ahead and take that. Find out more about yourself. Go internally. Learn more about who you are. And I'm going to tell you, only you will be able to find out more about yourself. Other people can give their perspective and their opinions and their point of view and what they see in you. But until you go internally and you find out more about yourself, you will forever be lost. You won't know. You won't know until you go after. Okay? Personality test. If you guys have a good one, drop it on the chat. Um, moving on. Number six. Ask your friends and family members. Thank you, guys. Nick and Mike. Um, so ask your friends and family. You can literally, after this call, send out five to, text, five to ten, excuse me, text messages to close friends and to family members and ask them, hey, what do you see me having talent in? Or what, what, what do you think my talents are? From what you know about me, what am I really good at? From your perspective, from your opinion. And then you can also ask another question, right? Ask them what you're really good, what they see you being really good at. And then another question that you can ask them is this. What do you think my weaknesses are? You're going to learn and grow more for that, from that question than the, than the previous one. Ask them what you're really good at. All right? Ask your friends and family what you are good at and what your weaknesses are so that you have a better idea from a third-party perspective being outside of your head how other people view you. And you're asking close friends and family and you're asking them, please be real with me. Be honest with me. Don't hold anything back. And then you have to have the awareness that maybe some of the things that you hear might not be what you're expecting to hear, especially from the, what do you think my weaknesses are? You need to take the, the constructive criticism and keep a high teachability index, a high willingness to learn. Whatever it is that they tell you, take it in with love. Right? Don't take it in personally. All right? So... So next step. So we just, these six uh, uh, points that I just made are about finding our talents. All right. Now I want to jump into four different things and I'm going to pass it on to Mike. Four different things about fine tuning our talents now. So we, so these are some tips and ideas and concepts that can help us find our talents that I just shared. And now we're going to go into fine tuning them. All right. Now we found them. Cool. What are we going to do with them now? Right? Or are we just going to leave them being natural talents and not working on them? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to build. We're going to grow. We're going to get better. We're going to improve. Right? So here are the very first thing. Fine-tuning our talents means this. Turning talents into skills. Yes, follow me. Fine-tuning our talents means turning our talents into skills. Only then we can do something with them. Only then we can really utilize our talents to our greatest advantage and put our gifts into the world. Another word for talent is a gift, okay? If you have a certain natural talent, that means that's a gift. And with a gift comes a responsibility 
And when you fine tune it, you are being responsible of your gift and you are turning that gift into a skill, something that you can bring out anytime. And it's so much more elevated than it was just naturally. Does that make sense? So let's, let's talk about that for a second. This came to me. I don't know where it came from. I have no idea where it came from. Right. But check this out. Our talents are our seeds. So write that down. Just, just, just trust me on this one. Just write it down. And then it's going to make sense in a second. Our talents are our gifts. Oh, excuse me. Our seeds. Our talents are our seeds. Our effort, repetition, practice, and focus. Okay, I'll repeat it. Effort, repetition, practice, and focus is the water. That's the water to the seed. Okay, so the talent is the seed. The effort, repetition, practice, and focus is the water to the seed. And then the skill is the plant that comes out of that. The skill is the plant that comes out of that, that sprouts out of the seed and the water, right? So understand, the seed is just a gift. The seed is given. The talent is given. Anyone can have that. The effort, the repetition, the practice, and the focus, which is the water that would allow it to grow, that's a consistent thing. That's something that we have to do ourselves. That's exactly what we're doing right now. Right now. Right here, right now. That's what we're doing, right? We're growing. And then the plant is the skill set that comes out from the water and the seed, right? I thought it was a cool little analogy. I don't know. Maybe you guys think it's lame, but I thought it was pretty cool. Whatever. We're, gonna, we're just going to roll with it. Um, number two, in fine-tuning our talents. Number two, stay around winners and people that are growing themselves. You want to fine tune your talent? You need to stay around winners and people that are growing themselves individually. Because if iron sharpens iron, iron sharpens iron. You want to be a winner? You want to be a winner? Be around winners. So you can help each other out. What do we have in the wave makers community? Just that winners coming together, growing themselves individually and then collectively putting our minds together, a mastermind group, so we can elevate ourselves in every area of life. That is what we're about. It's not just about business. It's not just about entrepreneurship. It's not just about health. It's not just about wealth. It's about the mind. That's what we're doing here. Mondays and Fridays, mental hydration things that we can utilize in every area of life. That's what we're doing. So we're staying around winners and people that are growing themselves, people that are fine tuning their own talents so that you can be, hold each other accountable, right? And you get in an environment of growth, guess what? You are bound to grow. It just happens naturally, right? Even people that just hop onto these calls and they're just listening, even, even if you're not taking notes, you know? And I'm not, I'm not here to talk, you, talk down on that, but I'm just saying, even if you're just here listening, you're already growing because everything that we listen goes into our mind and, and, and it can trigger new ideas and new train of thoughts. That's what we're trying to do. That's what I'm so passionate about growing and about reading books and audiobooks. right? I speak about that a lot. We, personal development is where is the foundation for everything. You elevate yourself, your mind and every other area of your life will grow. It's just, it's just how it works. Okay. Number three, I'm almost done. Number three, Find a mentor or find mentors, coaches, people that will help you sharpen your skills. Find mentors, people that will help sharpen your skills. It will, they will help you. They're not going to sharpen your skills. They're going to help you sharpen your skills. Okay? That's through questions. That's through their perspective. That's through their experience. That's through uh, tips on certain books to help them and ideas and philosophies and ideologies to help them elevate their lives. And let me tell you something else, right? You can, there, you can find mentors in every area of life. Okay. 
and you can find specific mentors for specific areas of your life, you can all, there's always something to learn from people. We can all learn something from everyone. So we always have to keep the high teachability index, the high willingness to learn, and the high willingness to accept change because some of the ideas that may be thrown at us, they may be new. So we have to keep an open mind to try to understand where's this person coming from? Why are they telling me that? Right? And is this useful to me? Okay? Find mentors. By the way, books are great ways to have lots of mentors. Most of them, my, most of my mentors are not alive. And they don't know me. I study them in books. I study them in audiobooks. What took them 90, 80, whatever years to learn and grow and develop, I can learn in a very short amount of time. Last one. Commit to learning everything about your skill. Skills. Commit to learning everything. Everything. And highlight that word. Commit to learning everything there is to know about your skills. That will serve you well because that amount of effort, that amount of energy, that amount of consistency and practice and, and obsession over your skills will elevate you in tremendous ways. And it will take you places that most people will never get because they're, never, they're not willing to do that. Because they think that growing is something that you do while you're in school. When the reality is growing is something that we should do every single day. Because if we're not growing, we're dying. And that's a fact. Right? So, but when I say this, I don't want it to be overwhelming, right? Commit to learning everything. That doesn't mean that you learn everything in a day or a week or a month or a year. That's a, that's a lifelong journey, right? But commit to that. Commit to that long-term vision. Commit to that one step at a time. One step at a time. 1% better each day, ideology. And like that, we improve, we grow, and we all elevate ourselves, you know, and that's what we're here to do. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that maybe I brought some ideas that, that, that you can utilize, that you can grab. And I only, I hope it doesn't just sound good. You know what I mean? Because I know it sounds good. I hope it doesn't just sound good. I hope these are things that you can grab and apply because that's where we're going to grow. Applied knowledge is power. Right. So with that being said, much love, guys. I appreciate you taking time out of your Friday to, to come out and listen to us. I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to the yin, Mike Batanti. Right. Unbelie when we're speaking about iron sharpens iron, he's an iron. Right. He's a very sharp iron. So pass it on to you, my brother. I appreciate it. How's my volume coming through? Perfect. You got it, homie. Awesome. Uh, I love that we have I love that we have 23 people on this call and I got dogs barking in the background but it's Friday night and you guys are committing yourself to learn committing yourself to being here um, and that's more than me and Nick can ask for is that we got people who are plugged in consistently trying to learn trying to grow every day um, I think it's very important to uh, piggyback off of what Nick said is that all of this stuff is completely useless if you sit on your butts and do nothing with it right? Some of the most intelligent people I know do nothing and they carry themselves. Everyone has that one friend who tested off the charts in the, in his IQ and knows all this type of information about all types of things and delivers pizzas and works at the paint shop and literally sits there and speaks as if they are all knowing. Awesome. And you're super intelligent, but you haven't done anything. Right. So I think that that's the biggest learning curve that a lot of people need to get through is like to know and not to do is not to know. So if you know all of these things and you refuse to apply it, you will sit in the same seat that you sat in last year, the year before, the year before. But if you can begin to develop better habits and get yourself into a consistent routine of applying the knowledge that's coming out of these calls, then you start to see progress. And like Nick said, it doesn't happen overnight. It's daily consistent effort over time produces results. Daily consistent effort over time produces results. If you do not want to do something small daily, then just do nothing at all. Literally.
That's how I feel about it. If you do not want to do something small every day, if you want to go through spurts and you're like, oh, well, one week I'm on, one week I'm off, you got nothing. There's nothing there for you. But if you can put in small daily efforts, then you have something. You get into a consistent routine and you start to develop and grow, right? Um, one of the biggest things I can say about mentors, if they're broke, they shouldn't be your financial advisor. If they are not happy in their relationship, they should not be your marriage counselor, right? So be very particular with who you are actually receiving information from. Me personally, I get information thrown at me from all angles and from not always the most credible source. So you need to be able to decipher through. Everyone's got an opinion. Everyone on the planet has an opinion. You need to be able to decipher through whose opinion is applicable to where I'm trying to get to. If you do not have what I want, then you cannot possibly be my mentor. I could learn from you in knowledge. I can learn from you in wisdom. I can learn from you in spirituality. I can learn from you in religious outlook. I can learn from you in so many different ways, but I need to specifically identify what am I trying to get out of someone? You get in there and here's the thing about mentorship. Ask as many questions as possible and shut up. Shut up. With your mentors, you need to be two ears and no mouth. The only time your mouth... Help me out, Nikki. My man, my man decided to walk away from the computer after his time was gone. No, I'm here, I'm brother. On, I'm trying to mute, but it's not allowing me to mute them. I'm pressing mute. It's not letting me mute. Yo, yo, Murad, can you mute your mic, please? Thank you. Um, mm, two ears and no mouth with your mentors. Like this was one of my biggest things is I was continue after I had already gained mentorship, I was consistently trying to uh, exude my intelligence. I was consistently trying to add my two cents to what they were saying. Like your mentor does not care how smart you are. Your mentor does not need to know how smart you are. It's literally for you. You're speaking to try to validate yourself. If somebody's on the phone with you and you're trying to gain mentorship from them, you already have their attention. Ask the questions that you need to ask and shut up and take notes. Like that was some of the best advice I could have ever gotten. My mentor was literally like, Mike, you are so focused on what you're going to say to me next that you're not even listening. You're not even getting the whole point of mentorship, right? And in regards to mentorship, start small. I don't go to the billionaire and ask for mentorship on how to be a billionaire. I start with somebody who is out of debt that I look up to that I can learn from. I'm going to, oh my gosh, these dogs. I find somebody who's out of debt. I ask as many questions as I need to. And, and odds are, here's the thing about mentorship. When I've run out of questions, I'm probably out of debt. And then I find my six, my six figure mentor. Right? And what do I do with my six figure mentor? Do I try to exude my intelligence? Do I try to speak and, oh my God. I bet you they're not going to stop. <laughs> when you're dealing with your mentors, right? You, you grab your six figure mentor. Are you going to respond to every single thing that he says? No. My best advice to you, if, if you actually want mentorship, this is my best advice. Like we say all the time, apply it or don't. It does not matter, right? Ask as many questions as possible and shut your mouth and take notes and listen and witness and learn. And guess what happens when I'm done with questions for my six-figure mentor? I'm probably making six figures. So what do I do? I grab my seven-figure mentor. Right, And there's building blocks to this process. But if you don't learn to shut up, you will never learn. And you can quote that.
If you do not learn to shut up, you will never learn, right? Too many of us are trying to validate our intelligence. The whole point of knowledge and learning is to increase your intelligence. We're not worried about where you are. We're worried about where you're going to be. And if we're worried about where you're going to be, it requires you to actually plug into your ears and not your mouth, right? So in addition to that, right, um, one of the biggest things that people do in retrospect is they grab all this information or they grab their talents. They identify their talents and they become very, very complacent. It's the same thing with people's business. Oh my God. You grab, same, people do it with their business as well, right? They get a couple runners in. Can you bring her inside, please? Can you just bring? Oh. Then send them down to the lake or something. I'm sorry, guys. So people do it with their talents and they do it with their business. A little bit of growth they said, of development and they let off the gas. People are like, oh, well, I'm already good at that, so I'm not going to focus on it. That is the biggest garbage in the world. God gave you talents for a reason. You need to push the gas on your talents. Stop worrying so much about your weaknesses and push the freaking gas on your talents because there are people that you can bring into your life that offset your weaknesses. That is effective business. Effective business is not for you to be amazing at everything. Being effective in life is not relative to you being a master of it all. Because what happens is you're a jack of all trades and a master of none. God gave you certain things that you're really naturally good at. Become the master of those things. And let other people master your weaknesses and then bring them into your life. Right? That's how this thing goes. Um, another thing that you can do with your talents is... Just do the damn thing. Figure out how along the way. If you just start, which is the biggest step for most people, just start doing it. Stop trying to figure out all the answers. Just start doing it. And the how will present itself as you begin doing it. I had no idea how to play lacrosse until I started playing lacrosse. And then I played lacrosse in college. And I was a starter on a really good team in college. But it never, would have, it never would have started if I never started. The same thing with your business. If you were sitting there and you were trying to figure out all of the key things and I just really want to do this the right way, bullshit, just start doing it. Grab a little bit of what you need to know. Grab the lacrosse equipment, put it on, and go play lacrosse. That's how you're going to learn lacrosse. Grab a snowboard, grab some snowboard boots, grab a helmet if you're scared, and go snowboard. That's how you're going to figure it out. What are you worried about? You're going to sit here and watch YouTube videos forever on how to talk to people, on how to share Kangen? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to sit behind the computer and watch one YouTube video after and not actually talk to anyone? Your business will fail. You will fail. You need to begin to start these habits of doing first right? Growing up, I used, to, I used to fight a lot. And you know what I would do in regards to fighting? I would swing first and ask questions later. Apply that to your business. Swing first and ask questions later. There are 10 billion people walking the planet. There are 10 billion people. And you're scared about saying the wrong thing to Billy Joe, who's broke as shit and is probably not going to buy a machine anyway. I'm very confused as to the logic that's going on in your head. Swing first, ask questions later. I'm going to pitch, I'm going to educate, I'm going to talk, I'm going to start. And I will dial it in as we go. And here's the thing about sales, no doesn't mean no, it just means not right now. So even if you flop on that pitch, even if you flop with your best friend, Sarah Jane, and she tells you you're part of a pyramid scheme and is not interested in the water and it's not real. Guess what, Sarah Jane? Eight months later, I'm coming back. 
and my pitch is going to be way more developed and my bankroll is going to be way more developed and my testimony is going to be way more developed. And now you personally have seen way more information on Kangen that your whole ideology has shifted. No doesn't mean, write this down. No doesn't mean no. No means not right now. Your pitch sucked. So no, not right now. You didn't have a testimony. So not right now. I don't have any money. So not right now. But if you never start talking to people, you will drown. Okay. If you do not start talking to people, you will drown. You will drown. The last thing I got to say, because there's just way too much going on around me, right? This is Pablo Picasso, and I would really like for you to write this down. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. The meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give it away. So that's the whole point of this call tonight is to find your gift. And it's all relative to last night's call on attraction marketing and social media. Like, <sighs> Nick is my best friend. And we're working on his vocals, but oh my gosh, the kid, the kid cannot sing. He can rap, but he cannot sing. So you know what I want Nick to do? I want him to rap. I don't want him to sing. We can work on singing. Just by being around the iron of singers, we can work on it. But the same thing goes, the same, he's, re, he's retired. The same thing goes out for you is like, we got time to give a little bit of effort to your weaknesses, but you need to dial in your strengths. That's what makes you shine. And fine tune and perfect your strengths and that becomes your gift. And then do you know what your purpose in life is? To give your gifts away, to show the world your gifts, to show the world your talents. But it reverts back to the whole thing it's a monster boat. Just do you see what I'm, I don't know if you guys hear what's happening around me. Just chaos. Um, it reverts back to the entire thing that I'm trying to preach to you is that if you never start developing, if you never start sharing, you will take your gifts to the grave. It is the richest place in the world, the graveyard from all the people who sat on their ass and didn't do shit with their talents and their abilities because they're scared because they're insecure, because they really don't care. You're alive right now. You're not only alive, you're blessed. You're in a developed country if you have Wi-Fi right now. The fact that all of you are even looking at me right now and can hear me means that you are blessed. Stop wasting your gifts. Stop wasting your time. We are all here for a purpose. What is yours? Find it. And a lot of times, like with me, it took soul searching. I had to go figure out myself to figure out my gifts. You can't share what you don't know because then you're the guy doing too much of this. You're the girl doing too much of this, right? This is what we want. This is what you're doing. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go internal for a little bit. I want you to go for a week or two and figure out what is my purpose? Why am I here? Write that down. What is my purpose? Why am I here? What are my talents? What can I offer the world? What can I contribute to society? And then I want you to run full steam at those things. And the people in your world who offset your weaknesses, they will fall into place. I'm not good at being calm, cool, and collected, but Nick is. I'm not good at certain things that Nick is really good at. There are things that Haley is really good at that I'm not good at. There are things that Lexi is really good at that I'm not good at. And because I put out the vibe that I'm really good at this, those people were like, oh my gosh, that's my weakness. I need to hang around him because he offsets my weakness, right? So that's what I got. My computer's dying. This is chaos. Tomorrow, I'm going to be in a different setting to do this vibe. So I appreciate you guys for showing up on a Friday night. 24 people is amazing. Nick, back to you. I love it, brother. I appreciate it, man. I know you had a lot of things going on over there, but you, you made it happen, bro. So we appreciate you. Um, I think we're going to end it on that note.
right? I think this is a, an extremely powerful call. Uh, um, I hope that you guys feel the same way. Tomorrow night, we're back for weekly review, goal setting, and dream building. I have a, I have a little special for you guys tomorrow. Very excited about it. But um, come back tomorrow night. We're going to keep growing 1% each day. We're here together, right? We're growing together. You are not alone in this journey of life. We're a family, and we're just getting started. So buckle up, and let's make waves. Much love, guys. God bless. Have a phenomenal rest of your, rest of your evening.